Hello and welcome to yet another video and in this video it is something very special because I'll be taking a look at this camera right here It's the original Canon PowerShot Pro 1. Now this camera came out way back in 2004 and despite its age Which is almost two decades at this point. It is still a very nice and enjoyable camera to use The lens quality is actually very nice. The image quality is still very nice assuming you actually shoot in raw The color science the image vibe that you actually get from it the nostalgic digital look from this sensor that you actually get which is actually quite nice the controls and everything you know this camera has a lot of very nice bells and whistles that you still would enjoy using it even with more modern day standards technology you know and not long ago I actually did a video on the original G1 and despite it being roughly almost four years apart it actually feels very very different and of course you know obviously there is a huge difference in the way that this is named Pro and to be honest it was actually the only Pro that came out um, before Canon really kind of cancelled this line completely and switched to the SX line but anyway in this video it's not a full in-depth review video as usual it's just a video about my thoughts on this camera based on how I actually use it and as you can actually hear from my voice I'm actually very excited about using this camera and also have been enjoying using this camera for the past half a year or so. So yeah, without further ado, let's get into the video. So the Canon PowerShot Pro 1, now this camera came out way back in 2004, as mentioned earlier, but despite its age, it's still a very fun camera to use. And to be honest, um, all the button layouts and all the ergonomics, all the uh, image quality and everything, it is still, you know, producing really nice image quality. The button layout and everything still feels very nice, very tactile. And to be honest, if you don't mention the specifications and also if you don't mention the megapixel count, um, and just let some random person use it who has no idea about cameras, they wouldn't really be able to guess that this camera is really that old, apart from, of course, the side door here where um, it takes CF card, of course. But yeah, otherwise, it still seems very um, relevant, like as in terms of like being a camera that maybe it's just from seven, eight, or even nine years ago, but not like 18, 19 years ago. But yeah, in this video, just like in pretty much all of my other My Thought videos on cameras, I'll be dividing it into three different sections. The first one will be about the ergonomics and the usability, and then followed by the image quality for both photography and video. Yes, it shoots video, of course. And then leading to my conclusion about this camera, why I still recommend you all actually, you know, give it a go and try it out. And yeah, first let's start with the ergonomics and the operational side of things on this camera. So the ergonomics, it actually feels very nice. And despite the fact that it actually looks really small and also despite the fact that how the grip actually looks like, it is a very comfortable camera to really use and operate. You know, like my hands actually fit on it really nicely and also it doesn't force your hand to be in a certain kind of shape. It has this very nice curve to it on the side of the uh, grip, well, in the front of the grip, rather, that your hands all just fits very, very nicely onto this smaller grip. And on the back of the camera, it has a very um, somewhat weird two inch screen, but because it's a small screen on a small camera, it actually allows you to have a very nice and comfortable, for the size, very comfortable um, electronic viewfinder. And talking about viewfinder first, the refresh rate is kind of okay. The color representation is kind of okay. If you really have to use it, it will get the job done. You can actually still judge the general exposure, the general color accuracy, the general um, kind of composition on this, well, with this electronic viewfinder quite nicely. It's just that, you know, compared to more modern day standards, you will start seeing pixels. You have to get used to that. And also in low light, the actual viewfinder is not so good. But then again, you will pretty much mostly be using the rear screen for low light anyway. But yeah, it is slightly desaturated compared to the original, well, the final picture or even the, um, the images from the rear screen. Um, but that is something you can really work around or just get used to as well. So in general, the electronic viewfinder here, if you just need to get the job done, it will just get the job done. But otherwise, for the most part, you can actually just rely on the back screen as well. Even though it's not great, and it's a very fingerprint magnet actually, even though it's not really great during a um, bright daylight shoot, but it it will actually get the job done. But of course, being an old display, please do expect that the viewing angle is not very 
um, nice, simply because if you just kind of like uh, tilt the screen a little bit and if you're not kind of on the same level as the screen, the contrast level will seem off and that is something you actually have to get used to, especially if you're like me, spoiled by more modern technologies of like this A7 IV, the R5, the R6, things like that, where you know you still can view the screen from many um, angles. With this one, you just kind of have to um, get used to different angle of the screen and just get used to the fact that the contrast representation depending on the angle is not very accurate. But for general use, this display will still get the job done. The refresh rate is actually kind of smooth for the time when this technology was released. And also the color accuracy is actually quite nice. And you, you just have to keep in mind that, you know, this camera is from 2004 and not really rely too much on the, you know, super perfect color accuracy or the color representation because from a different viewing angle it can seem a little bit faded but in the same time you know if you just need to get your exposure right or roughly correct it will actually get the job done for that as well and also roughly your white balance correct your picture style your picture profile things like that just overall general um, kind of settings it is able to just get the job done and just give you a rough representation or rough accurate representation of what you're gonna get so yeah there's that now moving on to other the points which is the button layout and how they operate I really love the button layout on this camera simply because everything is pretty much at your fingertips while being small it's not hard to do so but in the same time you know like even the mode dial it, it has the very nice resistance to it and it has all the um, essential modes that you'll need now I personally only use the manual modes and semi-manual modes which means if there are other like fancy features in all the other automatic modes I don't use them and I cannot really tell you about them but what this camera actually offers you being especially the pro line of cameras it actually offers you the custom mode which is the custom one and custom two which is actually very nice um, onto the other notes this camera actually has very nice tactile buttons so if you do work with like really thick gloves especially in winter you can actually get really nice response um, feeling from all of these buttons despite being very small well on a small compact camera you kind of have to expect that they are small but despite being you know a camera with a lot of buttons it actually leaves just enough space for your thumb and finger rests so you don't accidentally press on any of those buttons and even if your um, palm still covers the info button because there's a nice resistance to it with a clicky sound you will not be accidentally pressing on them anyway uh, what kind of bothers me a little bit is this camera is actually old to the point where um, the eye sensor wasn't really implemented into the camera as standards yet so you would have to switch between the display and the viewfinder manually if you want to switch between the two so yeah just keep that in mind because there were a lot of times when I just put my eye up to the viewfinder and waited you know a few seconds before the display turns on but not realizing that I would have to press this button first so yeah well not that I didn't realize I just forgot about it <laughs> But yeah, anyway, moving on to the next point, which is the top LCD. Now, despite being a really compact bridge camera, this has a very nice top LCD and it actually offers a lot of um, very crucial shooting information, which is good. So I really like that about this camera. And moving on to the side, this camera accepts really common large battery, the BP511A, well, the BP511 series of batteries in general. So Canon definitely you know, put a lot of this battery into so many of their cameras from the original G1 all the way to the 50D. So there are a lot of brand new third party replacements of this battery. So yeah, that is really good. And this camera also accepts my favorite media card, which is CF cards. I really love the fact that it actually takes CF cards and not SD cards because it's so much more reliable than SD cards. And also um, I just like how durable it is as well. And then continuing with the ports, well, by going back to the back of the camera, this camera actually has a very neat door here it actually semi spring loaded but anyway um, it has a very nice um, layout of ports here which is the digital out the AV out and the DC in port now I'm very glad to see that the DC in is actually um, a dedicated port here rather than like one of those DC in ports that actually uses a dummy battery into the battery compartment um, and then there's a wire running down at the bottom of the camera or is this one it actually has a very nice dedicated DC in port which is actually pretty good and if you're planning to use this camera as a mean to actually you know connect the um, 
cable to the camera to download the um, or import the images from the uh, camera onto the computer well you have to really keep in mind that you have to have a very old operating system let's say Windows XP and things like that simply because the software is no longer supported for this camera I try to use it as a card reader because I do have a micro drive card that this camera also accepts um, that I really wanted to download some images from those micro drives since I don't have a micro drive card reader um, but yeah, because of the operating system that I have, it's just um, too new for the uh, software that was available for this camera to just download the images. So just keep that in mind. But yeah, moving on to the next point, which is the lens. The lens here is a very small and very nice and cute lens. It is an L lens, but you know, it performs better than average lenses in terms of like the sharpness. That's what I have to admit, you know, especially comparing back to, you know, the lens standards of back then. That being said, it does still show some chromatic aberration. And if you're shooting, you know, with the widest angle of 28 millimeters, 35 millimeter full frame equivalent, there's a huge barrel distortion um, that you can actually see and also a little bit of ringetting as well around the edges that you still can kind of correct but the barrel distortion is pretty bad especially if you're shooting let's say something that's very close to the uh, lens element itself something that's flat let's say a wall um, yeah you, you will see the distortion right away but otherwise yeah it, it's a very good lens and it's also a very versatile lens because it starts at 28 millimeter full frame equivalent all the way to 200 millimeters and at the 200 millimeter end um, focal length it actually ends with the aperture of 3.5 which is actually not too bad of course if you take a look at the competition back then there were definitely other cameras that would actually have faster aperture lenses but of course for the size of the camera I cannot really complain a lot when it comes to the aperture because I actually kind of prefer it this way because if the aperture were to be faster then the lenses would actually have to be a bit heavier and also a bit bigger and that would kind of ruin the form factor of this camera that is something that I already love but then again my personal preference are cameras with interchangeable lenses so having a camera that doesn't have an interchangeable lens system um, I much prefer a smaller form factor than you know having a large lens and I still can't really change it because I would still be bringing my interchangeable lens cameras with me anyway so uh, I'm kind of into that boat but I understand back then there were like two completely different cams like either you go and invest into you know a camera with a fixed lens and of course understandable back then when people would have to decide okay do I want to spend a thousand euros on this compact camera or do I want to spend a thousand euros on that DSLR system so yeah but for me right now we do have the luxury to actually pick these cameras up for a very low price I got this for around 50 euros and also yeah it's it's just a very nice form factor because I'm looking at it from this point of view. But of course, even with today's standards and also with today's point of view, you all might actually have different opinions and perspectives on you know how this camera should be designed and also this camera should maybe have a much larger and faster aperture things like that but for me personally having a 28 to 200 focal range is actually very flexible very versatile already and having the aperture of 3.5 at 200 millimeter end of the focal length is actually already really good it's it's yeah, very good, especially for this form factor. But yeah, now onto the other aspect of the lens though, the contrast control is actually quite nice. And also the sharpness is actually kind of there. You have to remember that this lens travels from 28 to 200. So you can't really expect it to be super sharp, especially when it's, you know, traveling through all of those focal range. And also on the other hand, it is a very small lens and you can definitely feel despite it being well marketed as an L lens, it was definitely better than the average super zoom range at the time. But in the same time, it's not really up to L lens quality as to be expected. Otherwise, I'm sure the price would have doubled because um, real L lenses real uh, tend to be a lot more expensive at the time as well. And well, even nowadays, because all of my other L lenses are, uh, three grand. Anyway, 
Um, but anyway, if you're not too picky with the lens and if you can actually get used as well as work around the limitations of this lens, then you know it will still deliver really nice and sharp image quality simply because it has a very nice sharpness to it. While well, it's only eight megapixel sensor, so it's also not too demanding from the actual lens itself. And also, despite having chromatic aberration, it is something that you can actually get rid of very easily in post processing. You can actually um, just slide the bar on that color tone or that color waveform back in Lightroom or just you know some software that actually supports correcting the chromatic aberration will be able to get rid of it within just one tick. So yeah, the contrast on this lens is actually good. It's decent, it's not the best, but it's actually pretty decent and quite punchy as well. So that's also nice. So yeah, it's all about the scenarios and conditions you actually work with with this lens. So if you know its limitations, you will always be able to you know work around the limitations or just get used to it and use it to your advantage, things like that. So yeah, that's it for that. And now let me actually go into the more um, software side of things. So this camera actually has a very nice menu system. It's very nice and efficiently layout. Um, the only thing that I'm not used to is the fact that every time I press any of the uh, quick um, command control, whether it's white balance or the um, exposure compensation, things like that, I always have to press the button again if I want to exit that particular function. So with the more modern, or not even modern cameras, but with like cameras from even like 10 years ago or 12 years ago, whether it's DSLRs or compact cameras, you know, after I finish kind of setting certain quick settings within the uh, quick setting menu, I just have to hit half the shutter to just get out of it. Whereas with this camera, it still stays on, even though if I press half shutter, the actual quick settings will stay on. So for example, if I just want to adjust the exposure compensation, I just hit the quick um, button right here just to get me to the exposure compensation menu. And then once I finish adjusting the exposure compensation that I want, I just have to hit half, well, I, I first actually have to hit the same button, the same quick button, sh shortcut button again, and then I can actually get back to my um, original full screen again. Otherwise, the uh, exposure compensation bar will always be underneath, just like the original G1, which is kind of annoying. But um, talking about adjusting the exposure compensation, with the G1, of course, there was a little lag if you wanna make it darker or brighter. It's still gonna have a little bit of lag on this camera, but but it's nowhere as bad and you can actually get used to that lag on this camera once you adjust the exposure compensation. So that is an improvement, I would say. And of course, nowadays we take it for granted after adjusting the exposure compensation or some basic settings, the camera would still remain at the normal refresh rate. Whereas with you know these older cameras, it actually took time to adjust it in the live view system. And talking about the live view system in this camera, the weird thing that I find is sometimes the exposure is a little bit off from what I'm seeing, even though it's kind of like a real-time simulation. But sometimes when I do adjust the exposure compensation to go a bit darker or brighter, the live view actually follows that. But the final result after pressing the shutter button can turn out slightly, ever so slightly brighter than the original setting that I programmed into the camera. So that is something that I'm a little bit annoyed of. But of course, over time, I actually got used to it and also just learn not to mind it that much and not to take it seriously of course especially for what I use it for and onto the other note this camera can actually shoot at 2.5 frames per second um, the ISO range is between 50 and 400 so it goes from 50 100 200 and 400 though I recommend staying at 50 but I'll talk more about that later in the image quality section and the um, uh, the fastest Shutter speed, it actually goes up to 4,000th of a second, which was pretty impressive for the time, especially for a compact camera, because many compact cameras would only be able to achieve uh, between 1,000th of a second to 2,000th of a second, whereas this one actually went all the way up to 4,000th of a second. So yeah, that's something that I personally really like. And another thing that I really like about this camera is the fact that this camera is able to shoot raw. And yeah, of course, being a, you know, a, a camera with a pro in it, it should actually allow you to shoot raw because even the original G1 right here, 
it actually allows you to shoot raw as well. And uh, yeah, that's it for the operational side of things, for the program side of things. Oh yeah, if you're focusing in low lighting situations, there is the AF assist beam right here, although I actually turn mine off simply because I find AF assist lights so annoying because a lot of times you might be in the dark environment, but in the same time, you don't want to annoy your subjects or the environment that much, so I'd rather just either not take the shot or just try to stand there for a while and make sure the autofocusing system actually gets it accurately in focus without using the AF assist light. But yeah, otherwise this camera does have a very nice autofocusing system built into this camera. And of course you just have to keep in mind the year when this camera was released. It's not gonna be fast at tracking and it's not gonna be accurate at tracking, but with single um, shot autofocusing system, it's a very nice and accurate autofocusing system that you can actually rely on. It doesn't take too much time and it doesn't, you know, it's not lighting fast, but it also doesn't take too much time. It just gets the job done and it gets it really nice nicely and accurately in focus as well. Whew. But when you do zoom though, um, the autofocusing box does kind of enlarge a little bit because you're also kind of enlarging into that um, area. So you just have to get used to that on this particular camera, just keep that in mind. And when you flip up the screen like this, the uh, information for some reason disappear, especially the autofocusing box. But on the other hand, you can get really, well, you can take really nice selfie with this um, camera. And also if you want, you can actually vlog with this camera, although I don't recommend you doing that, but should you wish to do so, you can actually vlog with this camera. Whew. And now over onto the image quality. The image quality on this camera is actually quite nice. Yes, it's only eight megapixels, but it is still quite a nice eight megapixels that you get with this camera because the files are actually quite robust, especially if you shoot in RAW. I mainly only shoot in RAW though, so I cannot talk too much about how different color profiles in JPEG would look like, but for RAW, the color science is actually pretty nice. The color reproduction is also pretty good. Um, there's really nice color depth to it as well, and you can actually uh, manipulate the images quite nicely without breaking the files too much either. Now, I don't do a lot of heavy manipulation with the images, so I cannot you know, tell you precisely the detail, but from what I can actually see from just tweaking the RAW files in Lightroom, um, the files are able to really handle quite a bit of post-processing as well. Um, the color reproduction is quite nice. The rendition between different complex color tones are also quite nice and different contrast tones as well is also quite nice, um, quite nicely reproduced and rendered. So yeah, that's actually something I really like about this camera. And also it captures a lot of details surprisingly within the, um, the raw files, within the both um, in the scenes where there are a lot of highlight, heavy highlights and heavy shadows present in that particular scene. So it's something that I wasn't really expecting from a camera of this age because with a lot of DSLRs um, from that time period, it can't even, you know, well, actually many of them wouldn't be able to retain as much details in highlight and shadows in their raw files within the same scenery. Whereas this camera, it actually can, and that actually surprised me a lot. Of course, it's not up to more modern day standards or even the standards of like five or 10 years ago, but for a camera from back then, I was actually pretty impressed on the details that it was actually able to handle and um, kind of captured within just one file. So yeah, it really surprised me. Of course, there are downsides, and the downsides being um, it's not really good in low light so I wouldn't really go higher than ISO 100 because at ISO 100 is when you already started seeing noise and of course if you must you can go up to ISO 200 but I would not go 400 because 400 is when you really see a lot of noise but of course I do know people who are just really into the old digital look that are really gritty nitty and they love using high ISO things like that and it's just giving that very unique characteristics to them but for me personally for my type of photography and for my own aesthetics, if I can call it that way, I prefer keeping it low between ISO 50 and 100. And in most cases, I actually just keep it at 50 because um, even though the raw files are very robust, but when you are just trying to recover the shadow areas, even though there are information retained in that shadow area, if you push it over 50%, trying to recover over 50%, a lot of noise will also just creep in even at ISO 50. So just be careful of that. And also on the other hand, um, another weakness is 
the auto white balance on this camera is also all over the place so if you do shoot with this camera please shoot in raw so you still have that option to kind of adjust your um, white balance very finely in post so just keep that in mind and also Another downside on this camera is obviously the moray and aliasing. Of course, being a small camera from back then, you kind of already expect the moray and aliasing to not perform so well with this camera. But of course, just like with many of other limitations on this camera, once you know the problem and after you actually got used to the problem on this camera, you can always find a way around it and just actually come back with really nice results. Because a lot of results, after I got used to the limitations of this camera, I really came back with a lot of nice results and those files are very robust that I can actually fix a lot of things. And to be honest with you guys, eight megapixels is also quite fine. Um, it's not too little and you still can kind of trade in the resolution just to clean up some noise as well, which is pretty much what I did. And yeah, it, it still works fine. And to be honest, if I had to print the uh, images from this camera, I would actually be okay with printing, let's say a four, a three, a two images from this camera. And I'm not talking about normal printing. I'm talking about like super fine prints on real printers with real photo papers that would actually emphasize a lot of details so yeah and also the uh, skin tones rendition on this camera is also actually quite good um, but yeah that's pretty much it on the photography side of things now into the video side of things the video side of things on this camera yes it shoots video but only at 480 sorry 480 by 640 uh, p at 15 frames per second believe it or not and it will only shoot up to 30 seconds of video footage so yeah just keep in mind on what you shoot and just make sure that it's not a long sequence it also doesn't really have is so if you compare it to the more modern even the power shot g series line this cannot really beat those cameras obviously and of course the dynamic range is not really great because it's kind of a baked file now of course back to the photography side of things the dynamic range of course as mentioned it's not really there but when you shoot raw it actually still retains a lot of details but anyway back to the video side of things um and if you want to zoom in video you cannot zoom so you have to kind of like zoom to the focal length that you actually want to shoot in video with and then you stay at that particular focal range so yeah that's also the downside but in the same time you know only being able to shoot at 30 um seconds um it's yeah you're not really gonna find yourself zooming a lot anyway and to be honest with the quality you're not really going to be taking this camera too seriously but it still offers that very nostalgic kind of color tones very nostalgic kind of vibe because it is jittery and also there's that lack of dynamic range and also that very flat but very nostalgic um, color signs to it. Of course, as expected, um, even though Moray and Aliasing were kind of nicely controlled in photography mode, it's just all over the place in video mode because the sensor just has to work so much extra to always process every frames per second and you will expect that Moray and Aliasing to come on well to be more pronounced in video mode at least and also having such a baked file as well <sighs> yeah you can't really escape the moray and aliasing so just be careful on what you shoot that being said i'm sure you're not going to be too serious with shooting video on this camera anyway and um, if you're serious about shooting video with a compact camera you might want to look at other competition out there from this time period if you're looking at specifically cameras from that time period because there were other um, competitor cameras that were able to actually shoot at 30 frames per second whereas this one is only 15 frames per second so just keep that in mind and uh, yeah otherwise now on to my conclusion so to conclude I would still highly recommend this camera simply because it is such a nice and fun camera to use and also to experiment with you know like all the buttons and everything is just pretty much at your fingertips I really enjoy using this camera because it still gives me a very professional feeling of camera every time I use this camera because of all of the manual controls it gives me within the same time it is still in a very nice and small form factor and I also know that when I do get back home the raw files out of this camera is still very nice and also I can tweak it a little bit now of course if you're deciding whether if you should get this compact camera or a DSLR 
I have my biases with DSLRs and I would always recommend DSLRs because you get a bigger sensor and of course you get that interchangeable lens option so you can always change to different lenses to change your perspective because even at the end of the day, you might not be able to get the same super zoom um, with the same quality. You can get other lenses like, for example, the 50 1.8, where it gives you a much nicer blurry background. And that lens also allows a lot of light into the camera as well. And it's just a very nice and dreamy setup to have compared to this one. But of course, this is a very nice compact camera to also just experiment with. Oh, and the lens you can actually take off. And talking about taking off the lens, you can actually also twist this um, front ring and add other accessories to the ring itself, well, to the lens itself, whether it's, um, you know, an ultra wide angle kind of adapter lens or a different lens hood or a different lens shield to it, things like that. So yeah, you can really um, add a lot of things to this lens, um, pretty much just like a lot of the G series power shot line of cameras as well. Um, but yeah, otherwise this camera is a very nice experimental camera to go for. Not only that it allows you to actually um, control a lot of things manually, but the look that you get from this particular camera is very nostalgic. It has that very nice kind of vintage color vibe to it, which a lot of people seem to be very much into nowadays. And yeah, if you're just looking for that and just looking for something nice, light and fun and something you can actually take along with you, being such a small and light camera, then this camera is really a camera to also take a look at. And it's also a camera that actually allows you to give, well, it gives you fresh perspective on things as well because it has its own limitations and you're just going to be focusing on these limitations and you know um, going to be focusing more on the actual images based on its stories based on its concept things like that rather than on the technicality side of things so yeah that's pretty good and being a versatile camera within a smaller package means that if you have main cameras like i do like the r5 the r6 or the a7 IV that's filming me right now this being a such a small camera that the lens is already um, you know, very nice and compact. I can just take this camera along with me, along with those other main cameras that I have to places without worrying too much about the size, the weight, um, things like that, because it is a very portable camera. Now, of course, it's not perfect. I do wish it has IS. If it does, then it's not really powerful, but yeah, I wish it really has IS. And also I wish it would actually have back wheel. I wish that some other settings would perform faster, like changing the um, exposure compensation, that it doesn't you know, freeze the camera for like half a second, things like that, because that can be a bit annoying. I do wish that the um, startup time is faster because as of now it's, it is decently fast, but it's still not fast if you're used to the more modern um, camera, you know? But yeah, otherwise this camera is actually a very fun camera to use. It's very enjoyable camera to use, as I have mentioned so many times in the video already. And of course, if the flaws that I mentioned are deal breakers to you, then this camera might not be for you. But for the price, I would actually encourage you to actually try this camera because it is such a nice camera. Oh, another flaw about this camera is um, the zoom ring right here, which of course it's very smooth. It is very smooth, but you know, if I turn it on, it's not an instant kind of zoom. There is, you know, a few seconds delay with that zoom so it like you can't really get precise zoom with it as like with other mechanical zoom this is a uh, zoom by wire of course that being said um you can get used to that and um it does actually slow your workflow down but sometimes it's a necessary slowdown that you need to just get your mind freshen up a little bit were there times I got frustrated? Yes, there were, but in the same time, um, I'm really just trying to enjoy the scene as well. And this camera is also one of those cameras where it's like an extension of me and it doesn't really get too much in my way. It just slows me down and just kind of like makes me appreciate the process of taking the picture a little bit more as well. So yeah, but that's just pretty much from my side. If you have your experience to share, your stories to share, or if you have any questions, feel free to also just comment and share them down in the comment section below. If you need a free photography guidebook, it's absolutely for free on my website. Just click and download. I will not bombard you with any newsletter nonsense and will not ask you to submit your email address and nothing. Just click and download. Otherwise, I thank you all for watching. It has been just my opinion and I just hope it helps out. 
Thank you all again for watching. Stay safe, have fun shooting. Till next time, bye for now. Thank you.